Jim Harbaugh has made a ton of other people money. Um, by that, I mean beating Alabama, Nick Saban retires, which he probably would have done anyway, okay. but I'm ascribing this to Jim Harbaugh because Nick Saban retires, Dan Lanning makes a killing, right? Um, Mike Norvell makes a killing. Yeah. All right. Um, Sarkeesian makes a killing, right? Yes. Okay. DeBoer yes. makes a killing. Um, I'm assuming Jed Fish got a raise to go oh, to Washington. Oh, my God, yeah, I'm sure Jed Fish And does the others absolutely. who are making a killing are Ohio State Buckeye players. I'm reading to you a headline from the Wall Street Journal today. Michigan won a title. This school spent millions to make sure it never happens again. And that's Ohio State. Yeah. How much money have they spent from what you're hearing? It's a great question. I know that for them to get Caleb Downs, who to me is as talented a defensive player as in the country, was a phenomenal freshman player, a safety, who you know, the people I talked to who faced him were awestruck by what he was able to do in that defense mm -hmm. as a true freshman coming in. You know, just a phenomenal talent. Everybody thought he was going to Georgia. Ohio State was able to win that recruiting battle. Um, I suspect it probably did not come cheap. Julian Sand, right? Yeah, I mean, he, so he was, he's from Calabasas, you know, not that, I don't say like down the road, but a Southern right. California kid. When I went to the Elite 11 this summer, uh, he was a revelation. He was so good, so impressive, um, was headed to Alabama. And then in this change now, he's at Ohio State. Their quarterback room is going to be really interesting because they have another Elite 11 kid who's got a really big arm, who's talented, Aaron Nolan. They have uh, Will Howard they took from Kansas State who led them to the Big 12 title game two year, to the Big 12 championship. Is an experienced quarterback, um, plus Devin Brown who started their bowl game and then got hurt. Um, that's a lot. And then on top of it, you add Ryan Day is no longer going to be the guy running the offense. He brought in Bill O'Brien, and we'll see how that works. Well, isn't that a firewall for him when uh, if if he doesn't perform very well again, if the team doesn't underperforms in the mind's eye of the fan base to say, "Hey, don't blame me. I'm not." No, that's not going to work. Um, like I look, stop. But, look, Bill O'Brien is as top notch as you can get. You know, for a resume, obviously from coaching and what have you. Um, but I'm just returning to the original question here because it's just fascinating to me um, a, a program that once upon a time got smacked down because of some silliness over tattoos right. is now in a day and age spending what is possibly the Wall Street Journal is clearly making it uh, you know, apparent here uh, potentially eight figures of money to give to players, you know, legally clearly through right. the manner of which our world exists in college football like we're now seeing that part of college football change to me i think it's become more of a front burner subject because i think there's more you know georgia thought they were getting caleb downs they didn't you know he ended up at ohio state mm -hmm. there's certain you know quinshawn judkins was a terrific running back who couldn't leave yet for the NFL because he's only been in college two years. Yes. Left Ole Miss where they are very, um, not just very invested in I NIL, but I feel like that organization has really figured it out of how to make it work, you know, and... What, and, do, you, what do you mean? Because uh, I, I, I'm shocked you would say that since a JUCO uh, transfer showed up in a yellow Lamborghini to sign his papers with Ohio, with Ole Miss. I, I think, yeah. It's kind of crazy. I mean, serious, I, I, I'm just, but this is a different, different what is going on. Because a right couple now. of years ago, I remember, um, and this, I don't want to make this as like, this is only Ohio State. No, a couple of years ago, like I, Travion Henderson, great running back. I think he was a fresh, true freshman at the time, uh -huh. freshman. And, you know, they have a car dealership and he is with, you know, what looks, you know, it's, I don't know, $70,000 SUV. And this is not like, Plenty of high-level players have some kind of NIL component with car dealerships and everything, and that's mm -hmm. acceptable. Um, and so the I, I think there's a lot of stuff that gets, and I could be doing this in a five-minute segment, of conflating, okay, they're paying this as a recruiting inducement as opposed to they're, they're, they're rewarding this as part of an NIL program. There's a lot of stuff that has now been put under this umbrella and... I think that the programs and the schools that are the most organized about it, and again, I think Ole Miss 
has has been that become proactive they've gotten some really good players to go especially from like you know one kid was a really good edge rusher who was at florida and now is at ole miss they've walter nolan who is as highly rated a defensive lineman has come out of high school in the last few years was a texan m now they're like they have upgraded the roster considerably um because i you know like one of the people who runs their collective was um was a former uh, Walker Jones, former CAA agent who then worked for Under Armour, but also former Ole Miss player. Mm -hmm. Like in retrospect, I think if you were to said, like, if you were an AD or who would you want to be in that position of in that, I'm like, man, that would kind of be the profile. A guy who played there, a guy who understands the business world, the sports business world, and who understands the culture. I think the, those are the things that we're starting to see go into those directions as opposed to some random money guy who may have been the the, the guy who was the under the table guy seven years ago. Yeah, for the, some local buddy, the local buddy Garrity, you know, and yeah. so, you know, and if I'm not mistaken, one of the, uh, I guess, co-chairs, for lack of a better phrase, I don't know if this is the actual exact title of Ohio State's collective is Cardell Jones. And uh, they announced that C.J. Stroud made a significant major contribution to the collective. What could be and, better than that if you're an Ohio State person? Uh, C.J. Stroud was like, you know, like no, a, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not saying you're critical of it. No, but I'm not like, being. Trust me, I'm not being critical. It's because I do want to also say players deserve their money. I mean, I'm, I'm watching this because of the players, the Jimmys and Joes, right? And, and it seems like the guys who draw up the X's and O's can get to go wherever the heck they want. They can coach in a national championship game one one minute and then start wearing a, yes. a, a script A the next. And that's uh, – Kalen DeBoer's worked his ass off to come out of South Dakota to be Alabama's head coach. So I'm not criticizing or, 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 or I guess saying you shouldn't have when it comes to the players at all. I'm just saying wh where are the rules? And I, I wouldn't blame Jim Harbaugh, who seems to have cracked a code here, to basically say – I'm going to go to the pros where I know when free agency starts. I know when I can talk to a free agent. I know how much a free agent's going to make. I know what the cap is. I know what my capologist is going to do. And I know I can't speak to a player or have them in the building until April this. I mean, there's rules. Right. There's actual rules and contracts and unions. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.